Welcome to the Tech Count, your source for tournament results, storylines, and analytics set to the tune of your speakers. My name is Vasef, and I'm joined here by Swar. We don't have Sage because his new ESA job is extremely busy, but we do have a special guest in his stead. So, but before that, we got to run the numbers. <laughs> so, hey everybody, really quick, Panda Global Swar, we're gonna go right ahead into the numbers. We got a jam-packed show for you. It's time for the numbers. This weekend of Smash featured a couple notable tournaments, totaling with 624 entrants across three uh, key tournaments. Obviously, if they hit 100 entrants or more, it was on our radar, so we can talk about them. So let's go ahead and go right into that. Uh, first of all, Randall City in Edmonton, Alberta. I'm guessing AB is Alberta. I hope it is. Mm, uh, yes. <laughs> July 22nd to the 23rd, 108 people taken by Big D. And there's Mario. Big D, who had notably been a king day-to-day -day player for a while not since like genesis 3 but yeah he's he doesn't bring out the character more than like for jokes now yeah so congratulations to big d took it over 128 people second tournament m-i-u-s nightmare and meme land michigan unification circuit <laughs> wow these names uh <laughs> sterling heights michigan 123 people right on the dot zenodo with his diddy kong takes that uh congratulations to zenodo obviously still farming the midwest and then finally, the tournament that we all saw this weekend, DreamHack Atlanta in Georgia. 393 people, almost at 400, taken all by MVG Salem and his big Yay, meta. Salem, they did it. <laughs> notably, notably taking it over Void, who in a Game 5 situation in winners was not able to clutch it out. And Salem took the whole thing 3-1 after the reset. So congratulations to Salem. That'll be our little numbers bit. Obviously, if you think any tournament should have been named that wasn't, DM us, it's fine. But in terms of our program for the day, we do have a special guest. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things today. Uh, the three main points being typically what's going to be the meta, what the meta is right now, how players are doing, and how this person feels. So, Vaseth, how about you introduce who our guest is for today? This week only, we have the number one Smash 4 player in the world, TSM Zero! Hi. What's <laughs> up, <So>, dude? <laughs> Hello, how's it going? <clears throat> Thanks for uh, taking some time out to listen to us uh, this week. Yeah, seriously, thank you, Zero, for taking the time. I didn't think you'd say yeah, like, immediately, but you did, and here we are. So, uh, thanks. Yeah, I should have probably charged you guys an appearance fee and uh, also a lunch fee and a dinner fee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nah, that's, that's a Zero. I like this thing. That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, basically, Zero, while we have you here... We're going to go over some stuff. Obviously, we've only been a month into the new season. The last season just ended a little bit ago, and it was released with the new top 50. You being at number one, Foe being 50th, and everybody else in between. Crazy stuff already. General question, throughout the competition, the traveling, the things you've seen online and offline, how you felt at tournaments. How, how are you feeling at the beginning of this season so far? Uh, well, the beginning of the season, I mean, there's two ways I can look at it, right? So... One, how I feel about the season, me, like how it goes, like performance wise. Sure, sure. And then, like, and then, like, how I've enjoyed the season or what I think of the season. Which one do you want to hear? I want to hear both because I think the personal and the competitive are both important to understand to see how you really feel as a person. Right, right. Um, I think personally for me, this season has been beyond disappointing because I mean, I started off winning something, so it's not, that's not bad. Um, but then, like, I was like one hit away of winning Evo, so that's like obviously that sucks. That's a, that's a huge, huge impact. Like that's gonna roller coaster. Like essentially, you were one hit away of making history, so that's just like no way you sliced it. That just sucks. And then um, a, DreamHack was just hmm? yeah, no, it's a hard one to take. Obviously, like coming back from that really just uh, calls to how you know the mentality of a champion really needs to be tough. So not even blowing sunshine up your ass. Like, I commend that, because that's, that's a tough one to come back from, for sure. Yeah, and then, um, and then, uh, like, and then, and then DreamHack happened. DreamHack was just awful, because, uh, I, like, ISD, ISD on a game five scenario against Samsara, so that's just, like, like, you, you USD, you lose a sec as USD, so that's just, like, <laughs> like, like, I don't, you, like, dep like, how you take that is just, you know, depends on you as a person, but, like, you know, it's just really hard. And then, like, game one, 
you know, Diantha Parasol met early. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like it's just you know, stuff like that. It's just like uh, it makes you makes you a little not too comfortable. And then uh, in Losers, though, I had like I beat Leo and Ally. So that's like, see, see, yeah, if, like, if you beat Leon, shout if you beat Leo to, like, and Ally, all five PGR top five in a row in Losers of that tournament. Like, what the hell? I'm not going to lie, though. Like, I felt like I felt a little annoyed because. The top eight, like the top eight qualifier for me was a hundred times harder than any other top eight qualifier. Like for me to t- qualify for top eight, I had to essentially beat Leo, Ally, and Naira in a row. All past Just champions to- of big tournaments, obviously. Naira taking SmashCon last year, MKLeo <laughs> taking Genesis, Ally taking an Evo. Like, yeah, I mean, that yeah. is crazy. And that happens in double elimination, right? I mean, losing to Samsara yeah. is kind of what put you there accidentally. Yeah, so that's what I like. Like, for for Mito SD to be put in that position is just tragic. So yeah. it's like it. So it's just like I was just like I, I was just like I'll try my best, but this is trash. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a hard hand. I mean, I don't know how you feel about that, Visa, but like, there's definitely this kind of implicit like you know sourness to people when they say that someone had an easy bracket or a hard bracket or they got lucky. You know, like for example, the buzz. With Civil War, like, yeah, he won, congrats, but, like, his bracket was very questionable at the time because, you know, T, Hikaru, all these, you know, non-top-10 people at the time, but he still won, right? Civil War. Uh, and at the uh, time, wasn't one, Fatality a demon of his? Like, he had Yeah, lost, and like, Fatality was a demon, so that was cool, you know? But, yeah. you know, it's still kind of awkward where, like, other people have these crazy brackets and other people don't, and they slip by. Not that the bus slipped by, just, but... Whatever, just, just yeah. win, like... Yeah, just win, like, At the honestly. end of the day... At the end of the day, the losers brackets only get messed up because this game's like very keen to upset. So expect losers bracket to always be that crazy and just avoid that by not losing. <laughs> uh, I think I think that's a, I think that's wrong because uh, I think tournaments are decided sixty percent by your bracket. I think brackets are beyond important because uh, so let's put it this way, right? So if you give the buzz a bracket, I right, so let's say let's say the buzz gets a bracket of Zenodo gets a bracket of Salem, and then gets a bracket of, let's say, me, right? The buzz literally has a, a almost perfect bracket to reach winner's finals, right? And you may say, okay, that looks that, that feels really hard, right? But then you give the buzz a bracket that consists of Salem, that consists of Fatality, and then consists of somebody else that gives some issues that is, like, maybe around the same level. And then the buzz, like might get like 13th 25th 17th you know it's like it's it's a big deal because everybody has weaknesses everybody has like a bad matchup a bad player matchup and this there's a few of them right and like luck of the draw and brackets like affect matchups tremendously so like that's why seeding is um, so important which is why like we're trying to find a way to standardize it like going forward I know, yeah. like, yeah, Dream Hack, Dream Hack seeding was absolute trash. Yeah, there, there's a story uh, behind that, and it's not even, it doesn't even need to be talked about, but it was, it was bad, and it, it, yeah, it was an emergency, like saving it the night before, but even then, it couldn't be saved fully. Funny story, I was actually even helping. Like the moment you have to ask, <laughs> the moment you have to ask a player. Listen, in the moment you have to ask a player to see the bracket is wrong because all players are biased. Yeah. So yeah, like, no, you know, definitely. So like, yeah, that, that, that definitely that, that shouldn't like be the a, case. That's national emergency at that point. No, yeah, even like, then, like, that, then you still have, like, integrity issues. Like, with that. Conflict of interest. I mean, the only time so, you ask a top player to see the bracket is at a local. Hey, Jeff, does this look good to you? Yeah, good. All right, let's start. But not at a S tier <laughs> event, which this one, like, ballooned into an S tier event, like, in yeah. the last couple days. Not to mention that, like, some of the, some of the, like, here's the thing that bothers me the most about seeding is that, okay, um, Smash 4 is very unique in terms of other fighting games. And most fighting games, for example, let's say Melee, right? There's only really 10 characters that actually matter in Melee, you know? Like, if, if you have the best, I don't know, Bowser in your pool and Melee, you truthfully you just don't care. <laughs> right. It does, it's just, it just doesn't matter, you know? Like, if you're just, you know, more than capable and you play a top 10 character, that Bowser has just absolutely no chance of beating you. Because, Characters are not really close at all in, in, in most of most of melee. Yeah, the, ga- just not the, that close. the gaps are tiny in this game. There's like 35 solo viable tournament characters in Smash 4. Yeah, like the difference between let's say Fox and then um I don't know, Donkey Kong in that game is just it's <laughs> it's, it's laughable, you know. <laughs> right, but whereas example, in this game it's actually super close. <laughs> but like but like, for example, if you told a player in this game, by the way, you have the best Kirby in your pool, you'll be like, oh crap. You know, because like you know, Shout like, out to you Komoda. will think about it. 
Well, it's just it's just it's just any character because all characters are are viable in some ways. Because like for example, uh, you may say Ganon's trash, but then like Ganon actually has decent matchups against certain top tiers, or like decent matchups where like it's not it's not like a like a like a rollover. It's, it's sort of close or even. And like if you play the best Ganon and you don't know the matchup actually at that level, you're gonna get trashed, dude. Yeah, and yeah. there's and there's setups and there's things you don't know and things that'll just kill. You know, like mm-hmm. stupidly. So. Yeah, so there's 60 match. There's around almost 60 matchups that matter in this game. For example, I forget what tournament it was, but I- apparently I had to play one of the best me gunners in like in round two in my pool. <laughs> Genesis three. You would have but- never lived that down zero. Zero. I'm pretty sure that was Genesis three. No, it was uh, it was this year. And oh, then, it was uh, this year? Because I was gonna say, yeah, like that sounds like Roan at Genesis three. It's like that was. But, it. But, He's the best me gunner. Yeah, but- He's coming out. <laughs> yeah but like there's there's just there's there's uh there's a bunch of like weird stuff like that you know um on top of that is the fact that um most people don't really give credits to brackets like i feel like every tournament win should like the brackets should be talked about because it kind of tells the story for example um let's say for example let's look at sue's bracket run at frostbite right if you actually pay attention to his bracket he had a bracket in which he had to play only characters that if I was I'll, to be honest with you, I think the the hardest counterplay he had that whole day to play against was Tweak. And funny enough, Tweak did not go Donkey Kong, which probably he should have. Right. I think Tweak would have won if he went Donkey Kong. For sure. And then we would have never seen that that frost by his storyline. It would have said, <laughs> you know, being be me against Salem in Winter's Finals, you know. So, uh, again. But then um, uh, instead, you know, he he beat the Cloud, and then he had what what did he have in his bracket? He had Sheiks. He had Mega Man. You know, he had a bunch of characters that Lucario can definitely, like, like go toe-to-toe with, at least bare minimum. Yeah, we talked um, about it on the, the show, but, uh, especially T's bracket at Civil War proves that, I think, better than any at all. Like, people people have to understand the following thing. Just because a character that's, like, not perceived to be so good does good at one tournament doesn't really mean anything. Because almost every single character in this entire game can get really far if you have a very talented player and a good bracket like that that combination of bracket and good player can just get you can get you to winners finals dude. yeah not to mention not to mention that it, the reason characters are top tier is because they're consistently good no matter what hand they're dealt with you can do something with that yeah and i definitely agree and with like the pgr we really uh stressed mixing in set counts with placements because placements hardly mean anything outside of fourth there's just so much that happens in bracket that a uh, fifth place doesn't really tell the whole story. Like, look at Anti at DreamHack. He he was double eliminated by Salem, who won the tournament. Like, what does that mean? That happens to Ken all the time, too. Like, he'll lose to, like, first and second, first and second. But, like, again, you know, if you have the set counts factored in, then you know a little bit more about the story because placements aren't everything, like you said. Yeah. Um. So, cool. So, I think we know how you feel beginning of the season, kind of on the lukewarm side of things since things are kind of struggling to get started but it's only the first month so you know we already have it's already been a month oh my god yeah so be on the exact opposite side of that coin yeah we, we when we, when is the season going to be over anyway? december so after after the 2g championship series yeah, probably yeah yeah that'll be the last one that's every six months okay. right and we just had two s tiers confirmed so we got shine and we got Super Smash Con. And I say S tier because there's S Plus, which the only tournament to be in that category right now is Evo. And we just added that category. So S Plus. Sarcasm category. S, <laughs> yeah, S Plus, S, A, B, and C. So Evo's the only S Plus. DreamHack is the only S tier. Smash Con and Shine were just added as S tiers. They got all their confirmation and registration going on right now. So we got Stragglers. But those two are happening. Uh, and then we got gommel this weekend which is actually really low it's a b-tier event um, oh wow that's crazy to think last year gommel was where ally had that whole thing happen wow <laughs> are you you're not going to gommel right zero no i have visa issues so i can't really go out of country true okay uh reverse leffen interesting um <laughs> yeah so in terms of right now we're in mid-july actually no we're at the end of july by the time this comes out it'll be like july 29th uh, how do you see the rest of the summer of Smash playing out? Like, what are you going to be focus on, focusing on to making your climb to the top, to keep other people from climbing to the top? What, where do you see yourself in your trajectory this summer? Um, it's hard to say because there's um, there's so many things that can go wrong, and like 
um i feel like everybody has like some sort of plan against me as a player like oh this guy is not gonna go he's main he's gonna go this kind of character you know and like i feel like diddy Kong as a character is not really that good to be honest because <laughs> here we go because <laughs> well let me explain because there's just a lot of matchups that are just not like that good you know and it's just like there's a lot of really good players that play this character so, for example i think diddy's worst matchup is rosalina so then you know if if i play if i played the best rosalina players you know there's five of them you know and three of them go to most tournaments you know right um plus 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 carry her out randomly uh, so it's like, you know, uh, if you actually look at the win-lose ratio between Diddy's and Rosalina's, is abysmal for Diddy Kong. It's just abysmal. And, so it's yeah, like, and we were making note of that the other week where it was like, you know, you have the buzz at the top, Kirihara in a small gap, and then you have Fallen. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was interesting that you had this weakness between these three players that were at various levels when you're perceived to be, like, at a higher level overall. But still, it seems like the w setbacks by Diddy, like, closed the gap and made it possible for them to take you out those times. So matchups are very important. Um, so the thing is that Diddy as a character, it's, like, he doesn't really do well at, like, like at the big, big tournaments, like, the S tier tournaments, like, he just doesn't really do that well. Like, for example, if you look at EVO this year, we had we had three Bayonets on ninth place, and then we had one Bayonet to win the event. So that's, that's, that's more character representation than any other character in that top 12. Um... You know, no other character was repeated. So you had the best, very best player of their respective character, and that's it. So you had Ken for Sonic, that's it. No other Sonic, no other Sonic was, like, other than Wrath was, like, close. But, like, you know, Ken got the farthest. And then you had Naro, the only Zero Suit. And then you had me, the you know, the only Diddy. And then you had Larry, the only Fox. So this is, this is a trend. So it's, like, um, not, not, like, the thing is that the, the very best players of a character, generally, you know, for example, when I compete at a tournament, generally... Uh, I play a bunch of like trash matchups, you know, the whole way. Like I'm not actively playing matchups that I like to play. Um, generally, my brackets look something like Cloud, 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 Bandita, 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 Rosalina, <laughs> Mario, Mario. Uh, if if Smash you know, Four, I, I rather play, I rather, I rather play Mario at this point. But uh, wow, um, the the thing is that uh, I mean, it's just uh, like like the thing is that Mario is one of the most fair characters to fight against. <laughs> and, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't disagree. I mean, I don't think that he's the most honest, but I do feel that he has the most. I'm talking about in top, like in terms of top. Yeah, tier. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think Sheik is a more honest top tier, to be honest. No, no, no. Sheik's not honest at all. <laughs> oh my, we're not having this discussion. But that, you see, that's actually extremely interesting. Like, what a difference a year makes. Because a year ago, you and I were in Japan, and I asked you, like, when you go to Evo, when you're doing your Evo training there, you like, who do you not want to play? And you're like. I don't want to play ally and I want to play anti, but it's two Marios. And now mm -hmm. we're literally a year later, and it's like the exact opposite. <laughs> like I'd rather play well, Mario. Yeah, it's because it's because the meta, the meta game changed. Because back then in 2016, uh, there wasn't really any real cloud representation in brackets. Uh, we didn't have MK Leo. Uh, Komori Kerry at that point was more of a Sonic main anyway. For sure, um, Tweak was coming then, into his own. Tweak was still like developing, so like he wasn't like. Tweak is insane um, like now, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, he wasn't, like, top in every tournament, now he is. Um, so now we have a lot more cloud representation. We have Leo, we have uh, Tweak, we have Komori Kiri. We have three or four or five clouds that consistently make top A's, usually two of them in there. So it's like, cloud matchup is a lot more relevant. Uh, back in the day, Cillian was, like, still in the shadows. You know, I was, like, I played with him. Uh, Cillian's been my friend for, like, over five years at this point. Almost, six, I think, actually six years at this point. Um, so like I knew he was like broken, but like he just didn't travel. So when I went like when, when I had to play him at Evo 2016, I was like, all right, I was gonna be final boss battle, and, and it really was. But um, Salem wasn't making a splash there, and like you didn't really have any other bayonetas doing like too much at that point. But then they, in the US, at least, like that, like that was the time when other countries were thinking about banning the character because they had people who were being crazy but like for some reason she never no, I'm really i'm talking about evo i'm talking about evo 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 time evo time yeah last july, year right? july, july 2016 uh, that's after the nerf right, right right so then um the other banners were not around too much and then like something happened like towards the end of 2016 like the banners were going crazy <laughs> and then uh but, I mean, and it was a lot more and now there's just a bunch of banners like every bracket i play uh, at least two or three of the good ones you know and it's just like um, you know, so most of my most of my bracket is DLC at this point. 
you'll have I'll have a rare like this or that. But uh, my statement for like thinking Diddy isn't as good is because I feel like the best two characters are just obviously Bayonet and Cloud. Like I don't think there's really any like con 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 test men for for those two and then i think the the best non-dlc character is rosalina i think over she and then uh yeah i think rosalina is way better than she way better okay and then i think uh, rose is really good for sure and then uh and then after that it's just like it's just it's just a mix i feel like Sheik and diddy are about the same level fox right after about the same uh sonic. i feel like Sheik did i feel like Sheik diddy fox and sonic are all about the same tier right i was gonna say oh, sonic okay. for sure okay and then it's like and then it's like I don't know, like Mewtwo, Ryu, Lucina, Mars. Okay, so without um, getting too much into tier list, because at the end we can have time for that if time allows. <laughs> do you think? Do you agree with the statement that Zero carries Diddy and not the other way around? Uh, I mean, lol. Because <laughs> <laughs> it it seriously seems for people now for almost two years saying Diddy is the best character, like it it, it cannot be true at that point. Like, I mean, it's I mean, if Diddy was the best character. Uh, we will be seeing a lot more data representation in terms of, like a, a true best character kind of just shows itself you know just it's look like, at apex 2015 versus well uh, let's see evo 2017 and look at the representation you well, see patches what, as well right for example okay so for example <laughs> so for example look let's look at let's look at apex 2015 when when Diddy was like obviously you know Broken. minimum <laughs> right minimum I, I still think that version of Diddy was way easier to deal with than current Bayonetta though Sure, um, it was just the down throw up there was just But no no, like, I'm just talking about designed. like when you're looking yeah, yeah, at like who's yeah, the best like, character, like, the representation of Evo Twitter. The thing are... is that the thing is that his grabs will just kill you, you know, but like yeah. um dealing with uh, dealing with just because Diddy's kid at that point in time was very underdeveloped, so like none of the di none of the Diddy players, not even myself, we had proper banana play, proper side B play, yeah, it's just proper grab, 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 traps. roll, grab, yeah, grab, yeah, roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so like like that was a lot easier to deal with than like current uh, current good meta game for like let's say Bayonetta when it's more like all right this character's gonna edge cancel here move here move here move here punish right bat here within, in this ten bat frame within, window bat within. yeah which so, time bat so it's like <laughs> yeah so it's like it's it's a lot harder to deal I, with yeah, because the I meta games that, I see that. Are mm -hmm. and the game gets progressively harder so it's it's, it's just really it's it, truthfully it's just uncomparable but from telling you personally when I had to play the best ditties at the time um you know it was a lot easier for me to fight that. Than it was for me to fight like like Salem nowadays, you know. Yeah, I mean, oh, Leffen yeah, no, even like, picked up Diddy at one point. When I made, entered a couple tournaments. Yes. Yeah. When I made the comparison, I just meant to say like, look at what a top character in the meta looks like. And okay, yeah, at so, that time, like, the top character was Diddy, and it had nearly the yeah. exact same representation as currently Bayo had in 2017. So like, all I was talking about is like not comparing Bayo and Diddy. But just saying, like, look at what how the meta has developed. Where the best character yeah. at the time was this had the same representation. Now we have the exact same representation. Of Evo 2015 looks like we know what the best character is. A best character just shows itself. Like it's yeah. just obvious. Like it, it should be obvious to tell who the best character is. Like in Brawl, you would just look at the results, see I don't know, twenty out of thirty-two meta night players, <laughs> you know, and, and then and then I mean it's it's obvious. You know, you're just like yeah, okay, that's the best. I character. don't think no there's ever been a more it. obvious game except for maybe Tekken Four, but like yeah. Yeah, and then you you and then you look at melee, and then you're like, Fox, well, yeah, pro, yeah, you know, yeah, overall probably Fox. You know, you're just like you have a really good idea, uh, and then you look at you know like uh, Smash Four, and then it's like, um, I think to be honest with you, the main reason people were saying Diddy's the best is just because I win so much. I think it's just that's just no, it's true because real. it's uh, like the next level Diddy at that point is who Zenodo, right? Right. Uh, Zenodo on Edge. Yeah, Zenodo on Edge, and, and, and that gap, and that gap has been huge the, for the longest time like dyer had popped in for a moment like other ditties as well yeah and he's been placing better than east at some of these events recently yeah yeah the, so still well but not top eight at an s tier like zero has had for the past like two and a half seasons right? three years yeah three years so i mean i think it could literally be confirmed like zero carry diddy in results and that's why everyone's perception about the tier list is skewed because they just insist that diddy's the best but it, it's just not it's not the case anymore like you cannot say that yeah no and 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 it's just like if diddy was as good as people say you'd win everything um, like uncontested as well we will have we will have uh we will have much more diddies we will have like like um like diddy will just make sense to pick up it's for example let me give you an idea right so if you're losing to x character you know you wouldn't say okay if you're losing to mario what will your immediate thought be okay i need diddy Kong to beat this 
<laughs> well, no, right? <laughs> no, that that doesn't not. really pop no. up to your head. If, if you lose to, like, Rosalina, do you immediately think, oh, I have to pick up Diddy because, you know, I'm tired of this. I have to pick up the best. You know, it doesn't really actually show up like that. People more so think, oh, I need to pick up, like, something really, really good. Too, Bayonetta. Because like, I'm losing. Yeah, you, you think, you immediately think, oh, Bayonetta or Counterpick or something. Yeah, and she you know solves I mean? so many issues for so many players for so many reasons because she has, like, error built in. Like, error carried forward. Like, oh, you got hit. Oh, no, it was bad within, and that puts you in a better position. Oh, they made a mistake? Which time? Like, there's too much power in the kit that presents itself that, like, can really make a match that no other character and, can do. And in terms of results, for example, um, just to give you an idea, at EVO 2017 this year, um, there was a possibility that we had four Bayonetta's in top eight. Yeah, uh, it's funny because all the argument the entire time of calling Bayonetta over, overrated was she hasn't taken a major. Where are her results? Where are her results? It's just Captain Zack, and now she has two S-tier wins. <laughs> she, she has two S-tier wins. Salem is an anomaly, though, but she does have two S-tier wins. But we wins, saw the beginnings but, of it with Captain Zack last year, but, or last season. But what I see... What I think is more telling is the fact that the other Bayonetta's are not doing exactly bad. They're doing really well, too. So it's like you'll have the other Bayonetta's oozing around like 7th, 9th, 13th, you know, like right there. You know, they're like one or, mat one or two matches away from being in top eight. Like, I think it's only time until we have like w that one tournament where everyone's going to be like, wow, there's four Bayonetta's in top eight. Well, damn. Jeez. Yep. You know? That's the darkest timeline. So like so that's what you that's what you think and like that's where we're going. So if we we're talking about extending the meta game yeah, going yeah, forward like, in the uh, season, like you think you predict by like the two GG championship series that we'll have like multiple top eight. Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, people choke, brackets brackets are crazy all the time, but it makes the most sense. Um, though behind the scenes, like a lot of top players are just very sick of being in general. Uh, like, but what about the ones that are picking them up, like Abadango? Well, yeah, Abadango mm -hmm. was. <laughs> That's a good, like, there's a lot of players that feel that way, that, like, a lot of players feel like they just need to drop whatever they're doing because their character's trash compared to Bayonetta. That's how some of the top players feel behind the scenes, What's the you know? best hope against Bayonetta right now? Aside from Nintendo, obviously, but, like, who is in charge with, like, fighting that in the meta right now? Which character main do you think? Um, I think she loses no matchups. <laughs> uh, I, I think, to be honest with you... Damn! Uh, I feel like there's five characters that do the best against her. The, For example, I think the only reason Diddy does decent against her is because of Benetta. So, like, you can not, you, you don't, you're not in range of wish time. But so actually, you can throw Benetta. Well, well, that happened to MVD with Pink Fresh at Glitch a couple years ago. Like, he got it his was Benetta only last witch year. time. Oh, yeah, last year. No, no, no. But, well, no, no, no. It's because he was too close. But if you throw it at mid range, it doesn't work. So, but still, I mean, that's, uh, that's a risk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still a risk, but I'm saying like it, it's it's more safe than most characters sure, sure, like sure, going sure, in. Sure, yeah. And then uh, Diddy kills from grab, so that's also good against Bayo. And then I feel other characters that do well are Rosalina, because maybe maybe Rosalina players will disagree, but I think the Rosalina's ability to juggle the crap out of Bayonetta and like make her like scare being in the air is really good. I think her grab game is just uh, really good. Like up throw up air works works really well. And then uh, Bayonetta will have a hard time uh, approaching Rosalina a lot of the time. Okay. Um, that's that's a lot better than most characters can ask for, really. Some characters just get absolutely murdered by her anyway. Yeah. Um, Sonic, I think, does decent uh, because he's fast. He can grab. And it's just like he can contest um, and, and ground punishes. Um, and then other than that, it's like... Sheik and Fox, are they they're, they're negative? Not even even? Um, I, I think Sheik... I th okay, so I think Sheik is good in the ground against Bayonetta, but like she has the perfect weight to get uh, to die by all combos. Wish time will kill her really like beyond early, like a fifty percent if she has rage. Um, Bayonetta can edge guard Sheik, which no other character can do. So like Sheik's, if you can edge guard Sheik, like if you hit her out of bounce of fish, it's, she's dead. So like she can do that. She can do that kind of consistently. Um, Sheik does have the up throw upper 50 50 though, so that's really that's like the best part for her in the matchup. And needles, those are the two best. Uh, so I think that works really well. And then, though, actually, I think the character that does the best out of all characters against uh Bayonetta is Cloud. Yeah, I mean, when you have a final smash map to three of your specials, that helps. <laughs> uh, I think the reason Cloud does really well, I think Cloud's only true weakness in that matchup is that he can get gimped. But then every character can game cloud anyways. So it doesn't really like it doesn't really it's a change too much for it's him. A non-issue, yeah. Yeah, it's just the same, the same as whole character. Water you know? is wet. And yeah. 
And then uh, Cloud can up her. Like, if Bayonetta, like Bayonetta gets punished really hard for wish time and wrong in that matchup. So, for example, let's say Cloud is limit and the Bayonetta lands with a wish time and then misses, finish and touch, you die at 50. You know, like, no other cat can quick punish Bayonetta from anywhere on the stage with a heavy punish like that. Force smash, you know, cross slash. Uh, like, if you wait around and she up there, uh, she does a wish time, misses, you up her, up her, up her, you know, like, you get really nice punishes for uh, her mistakes. And if you notice, the, ca the character has been doing... Um, I guess some of the characters have been doing better against Salem as best being Cloud in general. Yeah, him and him so and Tweak like, over and over. Him and Tweak over and over. And yeah, so so yeah, I think I think probably Cloud is the best against her. Just just from like how it feels to play against Bayonetta, from my experience, it feels easiest with Cloud. But it still doesn't feel like a winning matchup. Okay, cool. So, well, really, um, real oh. quick, I was gonna ask you, uh. At Frostbite, Sue notably said, "Like I don't think I could ever lose to a Bayonetta. Like, like how do you feel about that statement? Like Lucario having that chance? I don't think he feels the same way anymore. Oh, really? No. Do you think? Do you think, think so. we solved Lucario pretty quickly? Um, I think he said somewhere where he was like, "Oh, Bayonetta destroys Lucario." I think he said that somewhere. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to look that up. But so, yeah, you'll have to ask him because I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't feel that way anymore. <laughs> yeah, and, or, or, he was like going yeah. on like multiple winning streaks against Bayonetta. He might have been losing recently. I haven't seen him in a little bit yet, but yeah. yeah. So yeah. as one of the last things for uh, the section on Smash before Bay Seth goes into the outside of Smash stuff, uh, we talked a lot about characters, obviously how you've been doing in tournament and stuff, but. Who do you see right now as current threats, and who's going away in terms of players, right? So obviously, right, Salem, S is for Salem, <laughs> he's at the forefront right now for a lot of people as the biggest threat, but who are some others, and who's on their way out right now or on the decline, in your opinion? Uh, um, to be honest with you, I feel like players are very, very, uh, like, you. this may not answer your question, so I may be cur curbballing your question, but I think that what matters more than players is what they play, to be honest with you. So um, I think you can see a common trend between characters. So, for example, you can see Anti and Ally struggling a lot more. Um, Anti is uh, is doing is doing is keeping up or doing it slightly better because he's able to play more characters. And Ally has been having a hard time because you know he's not able to counter, but he just he just plays Mario. Um, so I feel like Mario is a character that's in in general right now is is going down, as predicted by pretty much every top player. Um, he's just going down because what's good right now is DLC, swords, um, people, people optimizing punishes and spaces. It's hard to grab people in general. And Mario, you know, he has no range. He has no, he has no ceiling to keep going up. So all Mario players, you know, um, are struggling a little bit more. Uh huh. In general, in general. I respect that, um, and I see that. I mean, Ally at Genesis or at Evo 2017 was somewhat surprising. But it makes sense now when you look back. Like, like I think Ally is one of the most skillful. I think Ally is top three most skillful players in the world. But like, uh, he's, like he's uh, I feel like I feel like Mario is just just he 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 like he probably needs to pick up another character. Okay. And then um, what should we call it? And then all Bayo players are a threat. Doesn't matter who they are. They're just threats. <laughs> it doesn't it, like it, 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 to be honest with you. It really doesn't matter which one of them you play. It's like Salem's obviously the best one by far. And obviously the, the like the, the strongest one, but like it doesn't matter if you play the second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, they're all threats in tournament. Any bayonetta player is a threat. So obviously if you have bayonetta in your bracket, you should never sleep on them. Doesn't matter who they are, where they come from, they're they're gonna be difficult. Um, other than that, I think swords are up in the rise. Uh, people finally realize that cloud's amazing. So you see a lot more cloud in bracket. So any all cloud players are doing better. You see, you see Como consistently like <clears throat> if he's not getting top eight, he's getting ninth or thirteenth. So he's not like he's busting out. Yeah, and Ned's like a gatekeeper to a lot of that stuff too. Yeah, Ned Ned destroys the Chicago region <laughs> if I'm not around. <laughs> um, Ned's Ned's also really good. Um, he just doesn't have experience against a lot of matchups that he doesn't play in the state. Uh, so he's very good against like Diddy and Sh and Sheik and Fog characters that we have here, but he's not like as good as against like like Pikachu or characters that we don't have here. Um, <clears throat> there's there's you know, um, so Swords are up in the rise, mostly Cloud. Um, I feel like Ryu is he 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 was doing really well some months ago, and now he's getting a little more stuck. 
partially because people are learning. So I guess real players went down a little bit, but they, they might go up. They might go down. I'm not sure. I'm not. I don't know. Like I feel like Ryu is always a really, really difficult character to fight. So yeah, it, like me, that's that especially is a very interesting character case. It goes up and down more than I think any other character that I know. Of. Yeah, he sometimes he does really hot. Sometimes it's really it's hard to place him. Um, Mewtwo has been going down yeah, for sure. Yeah. All, Mew- all the swords like just screw him the hell up. Yeah, yeah. Like the characters that are good right now just fuck up Mewtwo. So Mewtwo is just really hard to solo me him in bracket. Like Navadango doesn't really bother with Mewtwo. I mean. Ever, I mean, I haven't played Avadango's Mewtwo in like a year at this point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, UGC probably, I think. No, actually, yeah, you're right. But like, like right now he plays me like like I'm. I predict the next time he'll play me with Banneria. So oh I mean, man, get ready for that, UGC, man. he dropped Mewtwo and went uh, Meta Knight, and I don't think he's played Mewtwo since that set. Mm-hmm. And then um. So that's that's going that's going. How do you see how like... do you see Mr. R and uh, Void? Because it seems like Void's getting a little head right now. But you know how is she holding up? Because I mean, I I think I think the best Sheik has always been Void, IMO. Um, I think though Mr. R's secondaries are stronger than Void's. So like he has like a like like Robin has like a very solid Cloud, a very solid Bayonetta. Um, and so I I feel like I feel like Void, is just. Slightly better than Ramin, though. Like, at that point, it's just slightly. Um, at least right now. At least right now. Because I used to think the opposite back when Ramin was done better. So it's like it goes back and forth. And do you forth. think that, <laughs> uh, you know, Mr. R's ability to pick up Cloud, like he was able to clutch it out against the buzz at Big House 6 with that Game 5 win, do you think that'll help him forward? Because I think the Sheik players are frustrated with sometimes the and they jank that kind of kicks them out of bracket because they're so light and because they can't make any any mistakes against dlc or donkey kong in most cases um i feel like Sheik has three problems in bracket first of all i think Sheik. uh i will be glad if a Sheik player can prove him wrong but i think the the Sheik rosalina matchup is hopeless for Sheik. um wow. like i think that match i think that matchup is just trash like it's just beyond trash i, I i've been i i think i told ramen <laughs> after the first time he lost through the bus i was like I was like, try another character. This match is impossible. He was like, no, 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 no. And then he lost a few more times. And he was like, okay, okay, I'm gonna try Cloud next time, you know. So, <laughs> and then, uh, and then I told Void that, and I, what did what did Void say? I haven't seen Void play the buzz in forever, but I think Void says something along the lines of like, it's really hard. And I think that was that it. sounds like Void. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he just he just says something like that. But I think that matchup, maybe not as bad as Hopeless, but like when I play it, I feel like it's Hopeless. Like I feel like it just doesn't matter. Like just pick up another character. That's what that's how I feel like. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's like Rosalina is a roadblock for Sheik, in my opinion, a lot of the time. At least like at least like here, higher on the bus for like winning tournaments. Um, the second issue is grapplers. I feel like I feel like Sheik should win against Donkey Kong and should win against Bowser, but it just looks so goddamn bad whenever I see. Like I feel like I feel like when I watch it at top level play, it just seems to me that like donkey Kong and bowser just win <laughs> it's, so, it's just so how do you how me. do you feel about the grapplers in the, in the meta going forward do you think they're gonna go up or with the lamest characters in the entire game dude by far wow uh, but well, everyone no, no, jumps no. out of their seat for that stuff re- man re- like that's regardless like... yeah regardless of like the play style or whatever like do you see um, those characters going up in usage because they've been steadily increasing in usage over time? I think time. I think I think Bowser like I'm gonna I'm gonna say what I said in my last video is that DK and Bowser are like super super lame. But like the, what what really matters beyond that point is the fact that um those characters are always going to be relevant unless they're nerfed. And their their best strength is as a counter pick. Because if you play a top player that does not know that matchup, it's a free win. It's the freest win you could ask for. And if B if it's a it's a good matchup and they don't know the matchup then it's also free win so it's like um he's like bowser and dk are going to continue being powerful counter picks for different many top players when you know when they feel like they need a quick one or two game wins you know um by surprise another person before they can adapt you know always going to be really yeah, i was gonna say like so, either bowser or dk is counter picked by almost the entire top 10 like larry fair Nairo, majority yeah tweak like <laughs> Uh, false like false took out mk leo and evo with that like what yeah, leo's happening? just like I, I hate donkey kong like and i think like, that's why leo <laughs> i think because leo lost to conga if i remember correctly then he was so on tilt in losers that he just like died at 30 he's like okay whatever i guess evo's over like 
Jeez, he did no, lose he, the no, conga. The... Holy sh! Wow. No, he, he no, he lost the false. He lost the false. He lost the false. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he lost oh, the false Donkey Kong. Oh, he he did lose to the false Donkey Kong. I just remember he loses yeah. Donkey Kong. I know he hates that matchup like more than. Ugh. that's so funny. He's, he's the new he's the new MK Leo Ryu for sure. Well, it's just it's just grapplers are just really like lame to fight, dude. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, it, they so, are they are in every like, single game like. It's kind of interesting it's that they finally funny, brought yeah. that to Smash because, like, well, it's 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 different. The way they work in Smash is a lot different than another fighting game. Because oh, sure, but the yeah, play the style is pretty much the same, like Taker, no, 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 or, no, it's, it's, it, or whatever. It, it, like, no, 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 it's it's not because in other fighting games, the the thing that holds back grapplers is the fact that if you if you wall them out and they can't get in and you keep hitting them, you're going to eventually win. You don't have to get a hard hit on them. Oh, you you're just right. Keep yeah. You can you can keep poking out with small things until they lose in Smash. You have to eventually go for something big, and that's that's their window. And and Smash Four, they're the best they're ever. I think grapplers are in in. I'm not I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about other fighting games because I don't know like if they're better in some other game. But and I know in Smash Four they work amazingly well because of rage. And the more so you like, hurt if, them, the better they get. Yeah, so like like you can you can be a forty. You 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 kept poking out successfully, Kill making all the right reads. Kill percent. Uh, now <laughs> now Donkey Kong's at one forty. He grabs you. You're dead, you're dead, dude. Why? Because I don't know. You tried to go for this. Back air that will kill you barely miss. He powers to the grab you, kill you. It's like you know you made you <laughs> That's made pretty unforgiving. Pl- pretty unforgiving. Yeah, yeah. You made thirty correct plays in a row, and then you you slightly not. It can't even. It's not even that bad of a mistake. It's just you were slightly late on this correct play, and that makes it so you're dead. So it's like that's how playing grapplers a lot of the time feels like. So it's like no matter what way you slice it, you know they're going to always be really good. Especially uh, because of the engine of this game, they're always going to be good. Sure. Always going to be. I mean, I think both Bowser and Donkey Kong are top tier in my opinion. Ooh. Uh, top. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> Let me stand back. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well let, let's wrap up wrap up that segment and say uh, for everybody at home or just for yourself, like in season four, would you say the top five characters that people should be definitely grinding in the lab against? Like, give give me your top five characters that you need to be right about now. Me. Meta. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bayonetta, Cloud, Donkey Kong, Bowser, they count as one, so three characters. Uh-huh. Um, and then at that point, I feel like I, uh, Sheik is very important because you might run into one of them, and if you're not really ready against Sheik, you're going to get messed up. And then for the fifth one is Draw of the Luck. Uh, I don't know, whatever you, if you look at your bracket, whatever, whatever is the threat at that moment, but those four are a staple. Okay, okay. cool. There you so, go. So everybody at home, you know what to do. Start playing against those characters. Yeah, do your homework. So transitioning really quick before we get into some Q and A from the people, Vaseth wanted to go into outside of Smash. Yeah, uh, so we'll just transition in here. So uh, real quick, as we're transitioning out of that, uh, what's your tournament you're looking forward to most in season four? Uh, for me? Yeah, and if it's a tournament that hasn't been announced yet, you can say hasn't been announced. But like, it's always you, Zero. Easy. We're not. We're not here to listen to our opinions. <laughs> we're always asking you uh, these questions. <laughs> Uh, none of them. I don't really care about any of them particularly any more than the other. Probably, I'll truthfully, just to be honest with you, I'll care more about the ones that have more money because it's just you know, right? That's just business like is business. that. I mean, I mean, I don't have to explain that. Are you excited right, for, for sure. SmashCon at least? I mean, that's a that's a good one. Um, uh, what matters to me is just be. Uh, what my goal is to be the, on the first on the PGR once again. So what I'm particularly more excited about is just that like. How can I explain to you my mindset is that no tournament particularly excites me more than the other unless they have like more money. So it's like, you know, like I grew up like really poor. So like, you know, for me, it's really exciting to put money in the bank account. I don't know how to explain it. Sure. No, no, for sure. sure. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, you know, I grew up with almost nothing, you know, starving for days sometimes. So like, you know, if I can put money in the account, you know, and feel like uh, feel a little bit more like secure, it just, it just feels great. You know, it's the greatest feeling for me, at least. Um, so like, I will obviously care a little bit more about the ones that have more money. I think most people will be able to feel that way. I think it's very understandable. Um, though in, tr- in terms of tournaments and how I feel about them for me, it's just more about like, it's like the way I see this is like a marathon, you know, it's going to be so many of them and I have to consistently do well at all of them. So it's like, uh, for me, it's just like, like, I'm not that excited about any of them. It's just more like, I need to be super, super excited about how to play consistently better, if that makes got sense. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Well, if you don't, uh, if you don't like a tournament more than another place, do you like, you've gone, so this is kind of stepping outside tournament, but like, is there any place, uh, like city or country or location or whatever that you prefer going to that you've liked that you like, I, you look forward to it because of this area or because this has this. So every year I get to go there to do this. So instead of like a tournament, but like, is there a location that you like the best? 
Um, whatever's the closest to me, location flying wise, I would like the most. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Traveling all business. Just travel, all business. Just traveling traveling far is really annoying. Uh Japan has the best food, but Japan's also really far and I can't go there right now, so it sucks. So like not Japan. Um I don't like going to Florida because it's just weather sucks. Florida's awful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then California so far. It's like I always lose like a whole day flying. So it sucks. Yeah, and, time zone. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever, whatever is close. If if it's midways, I like it already because like forty minute flight. Okay. Right, cool. for sure, for sure. Well, um, that'll transition us right into uh, what I wanted to talk to you about more, and I think probably most people would probably get a kick out of is you know, throw away the win streak, throw away all the trophies you have piling up, you know, whatever. Um, even if you're like at the top of this game, the game eventually is going to end, and like I think you are more of a spokesperson for this than anything. And that is that you do better than anyone else is that you have, like, uh, the best brand out there by far. And something that I wanted to ask you about is specifically you have almost double the amount of followers as your closest competition in this game. You have quadruple the amount of subscribers on YouTube of your closest, uh, your fellow peers in this game. So, like, your tier list videos, your best of each character videos and everything else have kind of, like, shaped this community into what it is today. So since you are, like, the absolute authority and proponent of this branding and content and all this other stuff, like, please give us some tips on, like, how to do that and, like, maybe your top three tips for how to promote your brand or your YouTube channel. Damn, basically, you're going you're gonna to give me so many props, man. What are you going to ask before after the podcast? <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing. Dude, you know, like, what we were talking about in, uh, in Japan, like, for two weeks, you and I, like, we barely talked about Smash. In fact, you... you Famously told me, you're like, don't get good at Smash, you won't like it as much anymore. <laughs> then, uh, and then, well, like, just we gonna... just spent talking most of the time talking about YouTube and branding and all that stuff. And I just thought it was the most fascinating thing. And I think you, sh- you should, like, have a- another opportunity to give that out to everybody else who wants to listen. You have to go so yeah, in-depth, I... you know, you can keep it to, like, three minutes or less. No, no, no. I'll give you I'll give you a really good response. This is a topic I, I like talking about. But, uh, but just some other side topic real quick. For me, Smash is, like, um, if we're doing something else... And like I played a Smash for like eighteen hours, or at least it's on my mind for eighteen hours. Like you need to reset at some point, otherwise you go crazy, crazy. Um, <laughs> but uh, regardless, though, I, for some advice for me for Brendan is that, um, okay. So the first thing is that what I tell most players is that the way they're gonna get the most money out of being a professional player, more often than not, is that they can't really rely on winning all the time because like. Even the very best players, you know, like, you know, I guess you could give me the title of, like, the guy who's won the most, the guy who's most likely to win next, next one, you know, it's like, even then, it's like, you can't, you can't think to yourself, oh, you know what, I need money to pay rent, so I better win this next major, you know, it's, that's like, not gonna life, work as much for, <laughs> that, that's not gonna work, and, like, life will just become very miserable for you so quick, so it's like, that's just a terrible mindset to, to have it like that, I think tournament money should always be counted as, like, extra money at the end of the month, what I think you can rely on money is things that can be consistent for your paycheck. You know, that's what a job is, is consistent, you know. You don't go to an office job to find out if you, after the end of the month you made 25% or 100% of your paycheck, you know. Right. Uh, otherwise, the world, otherwise, the world will. Mm-hmm. So uh, what I tell players is that if they want to make this game a living, they should only quit their previous commitments. Let's say that if you're going to school, finish your degree, don't, don't quit just for playing. Just manage your time better. At the end of the day, that's also what college is anyway. Um, second point is that if you already have a, have a, have a college degree, you already have uh, the education to be able to obtain a job and you have, you have a plan B in case plan A doesn't work, then, uh, committing to professional gaming is a lot, a lot smarter, you know, I will recommend a lot more, um, in terms of, all right. So first of all, let's say, for example, we have a player, right. That's like really good at one thing. Let's say we have a, all right, for example, a really good bayonet player, right. Um, what I tell people is that you have to stand out from, from everyone else. Um, one way of really standing out is winning, but not everyone can do that, or you can't always do that. So um, have some personality, right? So, for example, I feel like it's not it's not about, like, dancing on people, or it's not about, like, like cursing out or having a fire Twitter game. It's just more so about, like, being distinctive. Like, have something that sets you apart from other people that makes sense to you. So, for example... You know, what sets me apart from other people personally is that, you know, I wear the scarf, you know, uh, my, my glasses are generally tinted, you know, I, 
you know, I look, I, I, you know, I'm Latino, so I look a lot different than most of the top players from from the get go right away. Um, <clears throat> I'm very opinionated about like the game. I make videos, you know, very specific videos that no re- no re- no one really else does. So like that sets me apart from most people on the get go. Yeah. Uh, you have you have to find your 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 one thing that you're different from other people, and you have to push it. It's it's much better to be unique in in the market than to be someone else's like you know copy and at the end of the day you know slightly inferior you don't really want to copy someone else you know and just try to be like them that's not really going to get you too far um at the same time um be smart with your money like if you're going to be traveling around as a free agent it's really important for you to like budget around be smart with money don't be stupid you know don't eat out every single day you're at a major you know try to try to go to the supermarket first time first First uh, moment you get to the, another city, try to share room with other players, you know, um, <clears throat> try to like if you're notable, you know, try to see if you can get on compendiums, you know, so you can get the flights waved out. See if you can, you know, stream and you can do donation goals to go to tournaments, you know, to things like that will really help you get to more and more tournaments. Obviously, you want to go to as many of them as possible. You turn, you want to get on stream as much as possible so you can like get uh, exposure and whatnot. That's going to get you far. And but the, what really what's really going to make a difference for you and your paycheck at the end of the day is this content. So I always tell players you have to pick between Twitch and YouTube. Um, I you can you can do both, but I feel like it's almost impossible for you to run a successful YouTube channel, run a successful Twitch channel and have a successful professional gaming. Uh, right. Like, by placement. yourself doing. All yeah, that. that's why Naira is so impressive and you are so impressive in that regard. Cause... Right. For me, it's always been for me. It's always been a matter of picking. I feel like 2017. I've been slacking in terms of uh of YouTube content. Uh, I'm not really a streamer. Uh, I mean, I still have uh the second biggest amount of followers on Twitch in terms of Smash Four players. Um, only a little bit behind there. But the thing is that I don't really stream. I get a really I get a really high amount of viewers, but I don't really stream there because it's just I just don't have the time. You know, streaming is is a chunk of time that I just I just can't devote a, a lot of the time. You know, and streaming is about time. It's about it's uh it's Streaming has two advantages, right? Um, same as YouTube. They all have advantages and disadvantages. So I tell people, all right, you have to pick which one makes the most sense for you. So YouTube has three advantages, right? The first one is that um, you can schedule it so you can work on videos like weeks before you go to a tournament and just schedule them for around the tournament. And then you go out and you don't worry about it, you know? So it's like, that's that's amazing. I think that's the best thing about it. Um, the second one is that uh, the money can be kind of consistent because you you'll have an audience you know you don't have to rely on subs you know if you don't make videos for a few days it's okay because um you'll still have a you know a big portion of your audience willing to watch your videos you don't have they don't have to stay subscribed they don't have to always have your attention you know is if you keep a consistent schedule you know they're going to be around if you can yeah, deliver dude, consistent that, that's huge consistent. it's like the whole fighting for subscribers thing it's like huge. yeah mm-hmm. anytime tk travels about. yeah anytime tk travels he loses subscribers all the time Mm-hmm. So that's like that can be very stressful. Um, the biggest weakness on YouTube, though, uh, I will say is YouTube itself, because there's always drama going around YouTube. Sometimes they change the system and like ads work differently. Sometimes the the, the, the thing, the platform changes. It just doesn't work as well. Um, sometimes, you know, it just becomes more difficult or, you know, sometimes it's hard to grow because, you know, you're a smash person, you know, and you're not really like a general guy. So it's, it's a lot harder to grow as a competitive smash personality than it is to grow as a general gamer personality you know but obviously you know you're building an image around your smash personality you can't ask people to watch i don't know you playing a random game you know that's not how it works it it takes a tremendous amount of um brand building you know that even i can't say i have done successfully you know so it's you know heads you know heads up you know if if you're gonna if you're gonna do content you're gonna have to be able to swallow playing a lot of smash you know and be very patient because you know, if you have a hundred people watching you smash, you know you're gonna have two people watching you play Mario 64. You know, so so have some patience. You know, because you know it's just how it works. It that's how it is for everybody. So so that's that's the first thing. Uh, for streaming, the advantages are it's it's uh it doesn't require creativity at all. Um, I mean you can you can re reinnovate like the system. You know, you can have better layouts than people have some ideas here. But at the end of the day, you know what really makes a difference in streaming is be able to put in that consistent streaming schedule. Streaming is the the one way to be consistent. Um, to have a successful stream above all things is that you have to be able to have a t- uh, schedule time and you have to be able to do that consistently. It doesn't matter if it's four hours, six hours, eight hours, twenty hours. Obviously those, but uh, just you know you want to have that set amount of time. And you're going to devote to it every day at the same time, you know, 
um, always consistently the same person. Um, the thing about Twitch is that you have to be able to be liked by people. You have to be able to give attention to people consistently. So um, it's it requires it's a lot more social. Yeah. It requires a lot more social skills than tw YouTube. YouTube is more about creating very high quality entertainment in a short period of time. Um, Twitch is more about delivering a consistent level of entertaining over a long period of and time. And engaging the whole time. Yeah, engagement and, is and, and, huge. And, yeah. Engagement, enga engaging and time entertainment, right? So if if it's hard for you to deal with uh, deal with people, if you're not really up to like dealing with people's, you know, BS all day, you know, every day, you know, you're not a, you're not a a retailer person, you know. Yeah. <laughs> then, then maybe maybe Twitch is not your best option. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, the advantages of Twitch is that people donate a lot of money all the time. So, uh, but that's but that's you know, not you, a given. That's after a lot of establishment and you know. No, but branding. it's a it's an it's an advantage. It's an advantage. Oh sure, like, okay. I, so it, assuming everything's perfect, okay. Yeah, if you make it into the game, you know, like sometimes you might be streaming, you'll get a random donation of a thousand dollars. Sometimes this one dude will fill journals, give you fifty bucks. You know, it's like it makes the day a lot easier. You know, when you get lucky like that, and generally, you know, you're gonna get you're gonna get. Generally, you're going to get lucky a little bit, sometimes a lot, sometimes not too much. But like there's always going to be a, a, like at least a somewhat, you know, uh, flow of donations. You know, um, the biggest thing, though, is that you have to be able to maintain a community. And you have to be able to be there for them because if people stop liking you or people stop receiving attention from you, they're going to unsubscribe. Uh, so you have to be able to be there all the time. Um, the main advantage from streaming, I will say, is that you don't have to consistently like have crazy ideas. You know, it's, it's a lot harder to come up with content on YouTube, a lot, a lot harder to do with like, to resolve the, what do I do today question? Because you can't make the same video every day, but you can certainly stream yourself a whole week playing just for glory, you know? And you talk to people <laughs> different every day, you know? And, and that can work, you know? I see people do it all the time. It's definitely um, a possible business to go about it because people go there to watch because they like to watch the game. They're finally watching the game, maybe your skill, maybe your, your the way you go about it, but they mainly want to talk with you. So you need to give them a reason to stay there. Um, the biggest weakness with Twitch, I will say, is the fact that it's uh, it's a popularity contest with the with the subscribers. You know, if you don't give them attention, they're going to unsubscribe. If you travel, they're going to unsubscribe. So you have to always be, you have to just consist, you have to be able to be there consistently, so you can make consistent subscribers. Uh, so every time you lose subscribers, you have to gain new ones. So you have to make it all. It's a, it's an endless grind, like that. It's an endless, uh, it's an endless grind that's easier to maintain. Well, yeah. it's hard it's to like, keep as like a well-oiled machine, and if you leave it alone for like more than a minute, it'll fall apart. Right? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Uh, though, like, keep look maintaining the machine is not hard itself. You know, it's kind of like that. Well, once you uh, work it into your life routine and all that, you know, and that takes a lot yeah, of time. Yeah, you have to treat it as a job. I personally think YouTube is harder to do than Twitch. Personally, uh, it's less because, money overall, too, isn't it? Uh, or are they comparable? No there it it's depends a, yeah so, it depends there's a lot of changes in policies and ad revenue and all these things that have been happening on youtube and let, let me give you an idea right so if you make consistent videos that get a lot of views you make you make a lot of money like if you're making these videos every day dude you're gonna be banking at the end of the month um but like let's say you're streaming on twitch you know and then i don't know some dude donates five thousand dollars you know well you know well screw screw youtube you know you made a lot more you know in one month but that seems you know, more of so a lottery you, and like not a solid game plan, yeah you know it, 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 exactly and also sometimes people can unsubscribe on twitch so like you make less money the next month even though you did the same amount of time amount of work sometimes you do the same thing and you make more or less um twitch has more of uh variables than youtube does uh so youtube is more consistent uh whereas twitch is like really good are really bad you know it's like it's, it's all over around the place so it's, it's harder to tell um though i think it's a lot harder to deal with the idea of like consistently coming out with good idea good and fresh ideas all over time like i always tell people you haven't you haven't you have a struggle until you have to come up every week with multiple different good ideas to make it into videos you know because you not only you have to come up with a video that's gonna do well but a video that makes money so like a video that makes money has to be a certain length so like it has to be above 10 minutes. That's that's how you make money. So the video has to be above 10 minutes. You have to make high quality 10 minutes of entertainment that people are people want to watch. That is not anything like the last idea. Now do that five times a week. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, I mean, that's, that's, there, that's there's easy. a lot to be said. And there's a lot of lessons being learned out there when people try this stuff because they see, oh, well, you know, such and such is doing it. I'm going to try it. And then they run into all these problems because then you're also talking about editing then you're also talking about thumbnail making and 
graphics mm-hmm. and transitions and mixing and mastering and it just it just gets crazy. So I think that that was pretty good for your question, Vesa. I think that answers that. Yeah. If you no, want to go sure. into I guess, uh, the, the fan mail yeah. or anything else you want to say. Yeah, just to sort of put it all together, especially with branding, I wanted to mention it earlier, but Zero was answering so well that I just kind of let him go. But um, there was a there was a video on YouTube actually that I saw where uh, they talk about movies and character development and whatnot, and uh, they had a little experiment where they had Star Wars fans uh, attempt to describe certain Star Wars characters uh, without using any Star Wars lingo, like. Describe Han Solo without saying what his job is or his name or anything like that. And they could come up with all these personality traits or things that were unique about him that didn't like define him with, like, within Star Wars. But then they dished out the prequel characters and nobody could say anything about any of the characters because there's just no development and there was nothing unique about them. And to bring that back to how you can apply that to your own Smash career... Like, think about top players, and if you think about them not as a Smash player, and you try to describe them to other people, can you? And I think that that's the unique qualities that Zero was talking about. Like, find what makes you unique and make you comfortable, and then that'll make you a difference between people being able to recognize you and your uniqueness, and that goes a long way. And it goes well beyond just Smash or whatever. It's in movies. It's in writing. It's a very important it's the skill, grind. I think. It's yeah, the grind. Yeah, everybody can know, but you get to know to be able to describe yourself outside of anything else otherwise people will be like well they can only describe you as that smash player and you want to be more than that so yeah perhaps easier obviously there's so much that is just not recognized by people both you know for you and community leaders alike and top players like there's so much that goes into the craft so obviously for uh, sure many props either way we're at about a we're about an hour so zero if you don't mind uh you take a couple uh questions that were submitted to us and then we'll get you out of here um yeah i mean if you guys have any other questions like, like ask me now before you know i before i i go back to not paying attention on twitter <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. no um we, we have a couple picked out for you um from our audience so it'll mean a lot if you could answer some of those questions so swear why don't you go with uh you just want to go in order here from the top or what uh yeah so zero you got you got a little bit of time for you i got maybe like 15 minutes uh, i'm fine dude I, I was just bumming around tell me what's up all right so we're going to go ahead and go to the run back. Run back. And the run back's just like a little bit of time that we devote at the end of the show for questions from the people. Uh, after you made that retweet of what I said, my inbox got flooded with questions for you. Uh, I threw out a lot of them that were like... <laughs> some of them better quality than others. Yeah, yeah. Some of them like, hey, Zero, how does Lucas stuff Diddy Effer? And it's like, all right, this this is not something that we can devote time to. But anyways, we got a couple of questions lined up. Uh, we're going to go in order. You can give it your best shot. You can say pass. You can say whatever you want, honestly. Uh, it's up to mm-hmm. you. But I think we got a good mix here. So first question we got is from Ange Time, Twitter, Super Ange 128 The question is... Zero, how do you deal with pressure of being number one in the world in terms of the amounts of comments you get from the public? Um, I think I'm the most hated player by a long shot. I don't think it's comparable, to be honest. Okay, um, fair. Maybe, maybe, maybe Salem is approaching that because is it, is it hated Vegeta. or person that they want to, to lose the most? It's both. Oh, okay. It's both. There's, there's the, there's the fans that don't don't like me strictly because i beat their favorite players you know so it's like sure, um, sure. you know they just don't like me but they respect me then there's the haters that that you know they have their favorite players and they see me as an enemy because i beat their their favorite player you know and they want me to die straight up you know, oh, people yeah. like that uh you know i read comments along the lines of hey I, I know you make tournaments a lot more boring every day but like you know i have a lot of respect for you you know that's like that's like that's like a fan that likes the game you know you know tries to give me a more like you know like not not entirely a bad comment you know and then there's people that just say like i wish you will quit because you make this game like more boring because you beat the people that i like watching you know there's 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 the hate and then there's there's people that just don't prefer me there's there's all kinds but um i think overall all things considered i think i'm the most hated player by a long shot in this community i don't think it's close um at all i don't think people really understand the scope of what i deal with but how do you deal time. with it but how do you deal with it Yes. Uh, Wait, how hang do I, on. Deal with I was it? just reminded, Zero, do you remember that one fan that stuck up for you and then they just like just took a dump on that fan of yours? Like, it's not uh, just you, it's like fans of yours too. Like, people like 
just go out there and crucify for no reason. Wait, say that again? Uh, I don't understand what situation you're talking about. Do, do you remember the, the one fan that was trying to defend you in that one comment thread? And then everybody just, like, made fun of him and just ripped into him. And we were just like, what happened to this thread? And he, it's just like, so it's not just you that you have to defend yourself against. But, like, your fans are out there fighting, too. And they're just getting ripped yeah. on for being your fans. Uh, um, the way... Uh... I'm I'm gonna give you a more complete answer because this is a very this is a very interesting topic. Um, I feel like the the whole the whole uh personality like famous top players uh fans you know like the the whole esports slash you know scene we have at the moment is very much akin to high school. So it's like Cl you know clicks. like you have yeah, you, clicks. you have different groups you know and like different groups are perceived to be cooler or less cool. So for example, if you're a Nara fan. It's it's cool to be a narrow fan, you know. So no one's really gonna give you like, no one's really gonna say, oh wow, you like narrow. Oh wow, you're lame. You know, no one's gonna say that, you know. But if you say, oh, I'm a big zero fan, they're gonna be like, oh, why you like the best player, dude? Why don't you like X and X? You know, it's like that's that's just more commonly socially acceptable. And that's just truth. That's that's just how that's how it is. That's how I've seen it. That's how I've asked fans of mine, and they have dealt with very similar situations exactly like that. So I know it it happens a lot more than people actually know. Um, it's very common, actually. Um, some of my fans literally say that they I'm their I'm their favorite player, but they never say anything on Twitter because every time they do it, they get hate and they just don't know what to do about it. So they stop tweeting. You know, they I have people like that. Wow. You know, I don't think I don't think anyone, any 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 top player has a fan base that feels that way. And I think it's strictly because uh, the zero ban one one hate has gotten so it's just always strong at all times. You know, um, so that's 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 one thing. Um, in terms of like. Um, how I deal with it, it's just, I mean, it's, it depends, right? It depends on how I feel, you know, it's like a lot of the time, I, I think the best way to go about it is just dis disconnecting myself because responding to these people is just useless. You know, you get nowhere, you feel worse, you look worse. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it, you can, they can be, they can literally be wrong about saying something, you defend yourself and then you look worse. Like you look unprofessional. Yeah, you get baited, you, you get baited. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's like, like people can just say whatever they feel like, and it's like completely unpunished by anybody. Um, you can. My only line there is when people say or spread things that are inherently fake. So when someone says, "Oh, Zero stole this from me," I'm not gonna be there and look at that comment and say nothing, you know? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, somebody because somebody's gonna read it and say, "Wow, so Zero steals. Wow, but I don't like that guy anymore," you know? And then you lose, and then you lose fans sure. like that very easily. All right. You know, but different different is when someone says, "Well, I hate Zero because fuck Diddy Con," you know, and then you're like, "Well, whatever," you know, you just just keep scrolling, you know, not nothing to do about that one, you know. <laughs> so that's 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 the line that I draw. That's the line that I draw. Yeah, your uh, reputation is try important. To, yeah, generally I try to disconnect myself. So like, you know, I'm not gonna go and write it after I lose the set. You know, I'm not gonna see anything good ever. So no point in going there. Um, I try to like, oh, if I if I had a rough tournament, you know, I'll return to Twitter. Not on Monday, but like on Thursday, you know. So, <laughs> let it let it simmer, let it ferment. Mhm. Mm yeah. Um. I try to just avoid. Like I I've been doing this for so long that I just really understand where I'm going to see the most negative attention. So I just know how to like like disconnect myself. So oh, I lost Evil last head. Well, time to you know get really far away from Twitter. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because because um it's just not gonna be well for me. It's not gonna it's not gonna help me mentally. Um, it's really, it's really degrading how people get on Twitter with me a lot of the time. So it's like, it's, uh, it's better. Sometimes it's better to just not even read them. Um, or like completely avoid certain scenarios, certain notifications, like just, just completely a bit. And I think the, the part that nobody talks about that I think is the most hurtful is that since I consistently avoid common threads, since I consistently avoid my Twitter notifications, since I consistently avoid reading the feedback that people give whenever something happens related to me is that I also miss the good people. A lot of the times, the good comments I will never see because I'm not going to get into that thread because I know 80 or 90 or 95% of the comments are going to be completely negative to me, you know, and they're going to be hurtful and they're going to not be along the lines of, wow, I'm happy this, uh, I'm happy my favorite player won. No, it's more along the lines of fuck, fuck zero and I hope he dies and I hope he quits and I hope he feels better right now. You know, it's comments like that. So it's like when you expect to see only comments like that. Um, I'm not going to get into that thread and then I'm not going to see the one comment or the two comments or the three comments or whatever comment amount is there that says, hey, zero, you know, you got this. You, you, you can come back, man. Like, don't give up. You know, I will never read those comments. And I think that's the most hurtful because it disconnects me, not just from the people that that uh, I care about, like the like the true fans. It disconnects me from them, which is, I think is the most sad 
thing I, that that happens with the whole zero hate bang one one game but one uh like bang one but it also disconnects me from just the scene like i feel like a lot of the time i have to completely disconnect myself from the scene and i feel like i just like you know you don't really want to feel that way a lot of the time i felt that i don't belong in this community because people make me not feel welcome so it's uh it's a very it's a very complicated subject wow. but in general th the way i deal with it is strictly avoiding it because there's just no there's no other logical approach to it no norm no normal human being is going to consistently read very degrading hate all day and not let it get to them. No, After I mean, you like, read a huh? yeah, that's what I was going to say. If, if you're doing this at home, knock it off. Like, yeah, there's personas and, like, there's definitely people who put themselves out there as, like, characters, quote unquote. But, like, there is a real human being behind there. And, like, eventually it, it adds up. So, like, just, just knock it off. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's that's what hurts me the most. It's just disconnected from, from the real fans because I feel like there's a lot of really nice people that actually truly support me and they actually do care about me, you know, maybe past the DiddyCon. Uh, but I will never get to know them and I will never get to, you know, read their comment. I will never get to favor their tweet because, you know, it's, I'm so conditioned to only see negative all day, every day, no matter what I do. You know, if I, if I do well, I see negativity. If I do bad, I see more negativity. So it doesn't really matter which one. Uh, I think that's the most hurtful part. And I don't think any other top player has to deal with this at all. And, and at least in, um, in, in the Smash 4 community. Yeah. Cool. It's, so, it's so transitioning to a little bit of a lighter note, they said, you want to ask a question from Daniel? Yeah, for sure. So Daniel at Daniel Baum uh, asks, so he wants to know, are you and Ally actually good friends? And what other top players are you good friends with? So talk about the good um, things of the community. I, I think um, the person I talk to the most nowadays is Ally. Uh, the top players, like, we just talk to each other about random things, you know. Uh, we hanged out the other day. All we did was play Yu-Gi-Oh! all day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that what you did at DreamHack? <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't really want to go to the venue. You know, there's nothing positive that will come from me going to the venue. So, uh, you know, we just, we just hanged out and, just, you know, we just play Yu-Gi-Oh. We just, uh, you know, watch the stream. You know, we did, you know, we had food, you know, simple things. Um, I think the people that I get along with the best are Ally, Larry, um, Nairo, uh, Leo. I get really, I get along with Leo really well. Uh, I, I love like Leo. Leo. Yeah, um, Leo talks to me a lot because we're like we're like Latinos, you know. He speaks Spanish, uh, you know. He's from Mexico. I've been to Mexico a lot. I'm Latino, you know. I know I know a lot of the things that he's gone like he he goes through because you know we're we both come from like countries that are just you know not not good objectively, you know. So um, like I know I know the struggle a lot of the time, you know. So we talk a lot, and um, there's other people that I get along with, you know, like Scat, you know, I get along with him really well. I will have to actually look at the PGR to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. It's better to get the ones just right off the top of your head. It's just a fun. Uh, quick I get question. along with anti. I get al actually. Let me check out the people that I follow. That that'll, that'll it doesn't figure. have to be that complicated. No, no, no. Uh, I think it's I good. Get, uh, no, no, no. I mean, I'll give you a few more examples so people can get a like a like a more more general idea. For sure. Um, how about this? I get along. How about this? How mm -hmm. about you tell us what people would be most surprised to find out that you're friends with? Most surprised. Um, I get along really well with the Chicago scene. So like, I love Tyroy. I love Ned. <laughs> you know, they're very, very, they're very nice people. Yeah. Um, I get along uh, really well with a lot of the melee players actually. Oh uh, wow. You know, like yeah, like S Fad, Ice, uh, Mitukin. You know, um, I get along with like PPMD. I talk to PPMD a lot sometimes. Uh, Armada is like super close friend of mine. You know, I talk to him all the time. Um, there's a lot of the melee players you know that I get along really well with. Um. I'm not friends with all of them, but I'm friends with a good majority of them. I, Interesting. Uh, I, yeah, that's cool. Of, that's actually something I didn't know. That's nice. Well, the thing is that I played all these the competitive Smash games. You know, a lot of the Melee players, you know, I, I played a lot of Melee with them. You know, so they don't just know me as, like, a brawl kid, you know, quote-unquote. Uh, I was also, I was a Melee player at some point. I was, uh, I was a brawl player at some point. I was, uh, you know, all the games player. So, um, so that's, that's, that's one thing. Uh, I'm also like really good. Like I'm also f uh, good friends with uh, with Hack Crew. I was also you know good friends. I love with, Hack. Uh, Hack with, is such a good guy. <laughs> I was also good friends with uh, with Ally. You know you know rest in peace. Um, I also get along well with like Ryuga. Um, I get along with all the Japanese players. I get along with them really well. Like Earth. Um, they love Majinko. you. Yeah, they love yeah, you. Yeah, I love I love I love the Japanese Kakera, Otori, um, Kirihara. I get along with really really well. Uh, my favorites from like some of my favorites from Japan, are, like Renai and Como. I love I love this too so much. Um, <laughs> they, they are great. They're objectively. <laughs> yeah, there's there's yeah there's um there's uh there's a lot of like the Japanese scene. I love them a lot. 
they're really great people and uh i'm friends with like some some youtube people as well some twitch people um yeah no i, I have i have my, i have my circle i will say the people the in terms of the top top smash pro players which is more what they want to hear uh question related i think the people that i get along with the best are like ally larry uh naro renai como um scat you know me to king yeah. <laughs> nice law on tk awesome well yeah. uh transitioning to another question also on a interesting note oh, that, oh sorry yeah oh an anti always gotta give shout outs to anti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's uh the hyperbolic time chamber partner for sure um yeah so a really quick question from mexico this is from uh yasal uh twitter handle yasal resendez uh he mm -hmm. says what makes you choose your current main at the start of the game you had a consistent ditty but with the nerf you changed to chic for a little bit uh balancing her as a co-main until the next big patch when you changed again to diddy and then even using lucina and cloud at one point in some matchups uh, and a lot of people have been wondering are we going to see a dual main chic diddy again also thanks uh for being one of my biggest inspirations in the competitive scene i watched you play since melee with that sick green fox saludos desde mexico yes sir. oh that's really that's that's really nice saludo mexico compadre. <laughs> um in terms of uh, the matchups, the, the funny part is that I've actually played Sheik since 3DS. Um, I actually wanted to main Sheik in 3DS, but I didn't because it, mainly what happened was that the 3DS was so uncomfortable to play. Oh, yeah. You can't Sheik was, do any anything. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you, I couldn't move with Sheik. So, I was like, oh, my God. So, when finally uh, Wii U came out, um, I played Fox in 3DS strictly because he was just a lot easier to play, at least at that level, dash tag upper, you know, it was just a lot easier with uh with, with fox and 3ds so i played wii u uh fox at the very beginning at the sky invitational and then as soon as i had a like i saw the people talking about diddy being really strong and uh i was like oh i can probably pick up diddy you know that seems like a smart idea so i i i, I, I was actually playing chic half the time and diddy half the time who did you play in just, brawl in just brawl Knight, right? uh, uh well okay so in brawl i i, I first started off as a nest main this is <laughs> I start, no, but listen, this story is going to kill you, right? So I, I started off as an estimate, and then I picked up a secondary Lucas. I know, genius. What? And then, uh, <laughs> what? This is 2008, right? So then, uh, so then I was, I was, I was, uh, I was top, top one in my city with Nessa Lucas. And then, um, Awful. and then, and then my, fr and then my friend, I listen, my friend Yuri, he's, uh, he's actually on Twitter now. He's, uh, he's a guy I gave a shout out to. He's my neighbor. I've been playing with him since I played competitive smash internal since 06. Uh, so he he went to Smash Force, right? Because at the time we did, we were so poor, we couldn't even go on the internet, right? So he went to the internet once, which was like, dude, I went to the internet. It was like like an experience, right? And then he went, <laughs> and then he told me about Smash Force. He told me about like he went to Smash Force. I already knew what Smash Force was, but he was there, and he told me, dude, do you know Ice Climbers can do like this really good like grab combos? And then like I seen this like people playing Meta Knight. I think those are like the best characters. And I, this is like this is dead ass. The th first two months of Brawl, or, you know, he literally said, I think the best characters are Meta Knight and Ice Climbers, you know, but I might be wrong, you know, and I was like, like, he made, he made, like, the most perfect read of all time. So he started playing with those characters only, right? And then, uh, and then I, and then I tried Ice Climbers out because I liked them in Melee. Uh, so I was like, oh, you know, they might be fun to play around. So I, I picked up Ice Climbers straight up in, um, in, in, in Brawl in 2008, and I played only Ice Climbers from 2008 to 2010. Um, so I was like two years of only Ice Climbers um and i i did so well with them even though i didn't have a Wii to practice the chain grabs in at home because i was poor i would literally practice only at tournaments um i did so well that they banned the chain grab mid tournament to make me lose at a national uh so that happened chilly <laughs> and then um and then i was so mad that i had a sec I, like i played a little bit of Knight, and my friend main Knight. So I was like, dude, you know what? I'm just gonna pick up Meta Knight, dude. Let's screw this. And then I picked up Meta Knight, and then story story happened. Um, and then uh, I dabble a little bit on Diddy and Fox in that game, just a little bit, but not too long, just for fun, you know. Um, so then when like Smash for Diddy was around, I was like, oh well, if everyone's talking about Diddy, you know, I'll try him out. And I had a lot of like the cat clicked immediately with him, with me, like it just made a lot of sense to me. I was like, oh yeah, you do this here, you do this here, like it made sense to me. So I started practicing him along with my Sheik, but I was more of a Sheik made at that point in time, I would say. Um, and then the Diddy made sense, and then I just stuck with both. And then Diddy was doing better, so I just put more attention to Diddy. Diddy was nerfed, um, two times. So then 
I was like, well, Sheik has been untouched. I think it might be more wise to play a lot more Sheik then. And then uh, I started playing a little bit more Sheik. It was amazing. And then uh, Sheik was nerfed a lot. And they nerfed the needles and the down throw, which made her very uncomfortable for me to play. Yeah. Because I was like, because I was like, the grab confirm was such a big deal. Like Sheik played back in the day. And like the needle play made it so you can camp long distance and like have like a more like defensive play style. Now Sheik, you have to kind of go in a lot of the time. And that's just not the way I like playing Sheik. I like taking my time with Sheik and just doesn't, this just doesn't make sense to me nowadays. Um, that's a shame, man. I remember when we were in Japan and like Renai was talking about, man, I wish we could run it back to that, that, that famous, that exact patch, that exact mode in Genesis 3 set, because that was still, even to this day, one of the best sets of our game so far. Is that what he said? Yeah, remember when we were at the uh, QB's house and we were sitting there? He said he, like, you know, it's like we're training for Evo and whatnot. They're like, man, he said, I, I would give anything to do a first, because you were doing first attempts against everybody. He's like, I would give anything to do a first attempt against Genesis 3 exactly. Like, the, the exact same patch, the exact same characters, like, that, like, I, he's like, I would I would have loved to do done a first attempt during that time. Oh, yeah, when I was just, that, I think, I think that's still my favorite set of all time. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Because the thing. The thing, the thing that made that set so special to me is that um, I was at the top of my... Because I feel like at Genesis 3, I played some of the best I've ever played ever. Like, it was consistent, precise, like, like I'm playing really great. And, th- like, most... Like, I've won I've won S-tier tournaments where I feel like I'm playing, like, trash that day. You know, it's like... Like, I, I like I look back and I'm like, there's nothing really impressive about this, you know? Like, like I'm just being honest here. And then uh, um, there's days where I'm like, oh, I played okay, but I still won. So, um, you know, that's cool. But, like, that day, that weekend, I was, like, I'm playing amazing. That very rarely happens. And then um, Villager was one of my favorite matchups to fight, um, fight, and I knew that matchup so well. So, in my head, I was, like, there's no way I can lose to a Villager with Sheik. And then Renai was, like, so smart that, like, you know, the Jomi factors when, like, there's layers of thinking that players Definitely, engage yeah, on? for sure. Yeah. Yep. yeah, so, like, the Yomi levels were just off the chart, dude. It's just too much. Like I will do, I will do, I will do something, and I will try to trick him in ways that I knew he wouldn't be able to see coming because I know, like, I know nobody will think of this one trick in this one scenario, or this little bit of spacing right here, and he would just see it right through, you know. And then it was just crazy. It was so enjoyable for me to play, um, and it was just crazy because it went down to the wire, and I was just like, I was just like, dude, this is this is so hard. <laughs> yeah. I like Vill- villager is not hard like this. It's, 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 it's this dude. And then I was just like, it was just very impressive. Uh, I had so much fun. And I feel like ever since then, I feel like me and Renat just have this r- crazy level of respect for each other. I don't know. It's like we it's like we became friends through 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 a good asset. It's kind of like that. Cool. All right. So Vesa, if you got one more question, that one and uh Yeah, let's uh let's uh, let's end it on a fun note since we talked about it earlier in the show and it's a good wrapping point. So Peter from uh Young Pete SSB asks, Hello, I have a question for Zero. Will you be picking up Bayonetta in the future? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. If it gets to a point where I, I don't think I can, okay. The thing is that I think I think I will do better if I main Bayonetta. It's just it's just obvious, you know. Um, Jesus. she's better. She's better than Diddy. So like, um, if I, I'll be honest with you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Um, if I mean, I play this game to compete, you know, it comes down to a living, like, when it matters to me, when it just it does, you know, if I'm willing to camp, I'm willing to pick up a different character, you know, it's just, it works like that. Um, so, what I'm going to say is this, if I feel like I've run all, all the resources for me to defeat Bayonetta, and I feel like it gets to a point where I've done all I can with this character, and that's just how I really feel, because, yeah, I understand, I feel like I work the hardest out of any player right now. You know, I have a coach, I have an analyst, I run statistics, I look at videos a ridiculous amount of times, I practice every day no matter what, even if I'm tired, even if I just came back from somewhere, I'm still playing. Um, I do so much out of the game and inside of the game to get better at this, and sometimes it's just not enough. Um, that, like, if it gets to a point where I feel like I really can do enough, which I know is a ridiculous, very high bar... And I feel like it's the best next step to pick up Bayonetta. Then I will. How close are and we? How close are we? I feel like we're ninety five percent there. Jesus! Wow. <laughs> wow, the polar ice caps are melting. The sea levels are rising. We are approaching the darkest timeline. I feel like the darkest timeline will be when I become a really good Bayonetta main, <laughs> and then like, I, and, and then and then and then there's just no there's just no more Diddy. There's just Bayonetta. Yeah, and I was gonna I feel say. Like, 
I was gonna say like and, it would be the quote unquote most hated player with the most quote unquote most hated character. Oh boy, the ultimate it would, villain. It would only go hand in hand, huh? <laughs> but here's here's the here's the best part is that I feel like if I main Bayonetta and I start winning with her, I feel like the character will get banned probably. Do you? Want I don't think. Like, do you think? Okay, just really quick. This is like my own personal question, but how close are you, do you think we are to a ban? I don't think we're close at all. I think we're like thirty percent. Like zero we're about percent. we're about thirty percent. That's a really good guess, actually. Um, the thing is that the way the, the the ban is not gonna happen right now because the character is perceived to be beatable, and the character is perceived to be uh, ban is, is considered at this point to be bullshit, boring, and just stupid to deal with. That's just the general opinion of her. But ultimately, it the general opinion is that if you're better than the other guy and you consistently prove that, then you can win. You know, it, 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 she's not perceived to, um, like, win against all odds. Now, then again, if a Bayonetta player rolls in and wins everything and it's just not losing, then I think she'll get banned. Huh. Okay. So I, I think I think it would have to be more than just a player because by that logic, Diddy would have been banned by now. It, it would have... Uh, it's different because Diddy's perceived to be different. Uh, it's kind of like... Well, still, I, I, think, I think what we, it would have to be what we were talking about earlier where, like... Instead of just one in every top eight, we're starting to get to three, four, five, six in the top eights. Then it starts getting a problem. Well, let's put it this way, right? Let's say, for example, I pick up Bayonet, right? Let's say it takes me a few, a little time, you know, to get adjusted. But then I eventually become just as good as my Diddy is with Bayonet, you know, which I will say is um, pretty much mastery of the character, right? Um, so then that happens, right? And then grand finals and winners finals become zero versus sale in Bayonet Adidas. All right, let's say that happens for a few majors in a row. What's going to happen? <laughs> what is going to happen indeed? Oh, boy. I know I mean. next time. I, I, this... I think I think if I think if it gets to that point, it wouldn't surprise me if the character if the character either gets uh banned or nerfed immediately. Let's hope that it doesn't happen before a new smash comes out. Let's... <laughs> I mean, I feel like Do you think like it, it could happen this season? Dude. Um maybe not this season, but I feel like it might happen eventually. Yeah, that's cool. true. All right. It all it all it all it all depends really like like if 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 I don't deem that I can I can keep magic because Diddy Diddy works for like ninety percent of times you know like um but like if it gets to a point where like um I feel like it's just not good enough you know it's like I mean it's, it's gonna have to happen yeah but I mean, uh, especially if you're I'll, thinking I'll, this I know Abadango is definitely showing that he's thinking it and putting it in action Leo well Abadango thought of. Avadango thought about it, but he's doing it. Yeah, and uh, like I know Leo a lot of players want. T- Leo tweeted it as well when he lost at Evo. He's like, I think I should pick up Bayonetta. Uh huh. Oh boy! Oh boy! It's the end of the world. As we know. So zero once again. Thank you for your time, Vesa. Do you have any more on the questions? Because we're we're pretty much done there, right? No, for sure. Thank you so much for coming out, dude. Oh, you don't have any more? Uh, oh, we, well, we have more, but like it's already at a ninety-minute show, so we want to keep it. Give me one more. One more here. One more. One more. Do we have oh, a quick boy. one? Uh, all right. So th- th- this will be a good one, just because okay. it's nice and short, and it could be a nice little message at the end. So, Isaiah, writing from Twitter handle Isaiah Two, says, "How do you stay motivated when problems come up during a match or a season?" Thanks. Uh, okay. So this, I, I call it the four steps, right? The first step <laughs> okay. is the first, the, the first step is, uh, something bad happens. So then you are, you, you begin to assess your reality. You begin to ac- assess the fact that whatever you didn't want to happen is currently happening or happened <laughs> and is your reality. So it comes to, it comes to, first of all, acknowledging the check. problem, acknowledging the problem. Step number one, step number two is that you will, you will get hit by the emotions that will make you cause so that's the emotional hit and this third hit is uh what i what the third step i'm sorry is what i call uh the personal negativity from it so like let's say first step you know lost to some dude second step fuck <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> third, third, thir- third third step i am very depressed about this and then here's here's what makes here's the thing that people don't know no champion in in almost anything or like Unless, unless, you know, there's very, been, I think there's maybe like one or two cases, but like generally champions are not really about who wins because a champion isn't really someone who's never lost. It's more so about somebody who can never consistently gave up. surpass. Yes. Yeah, someone who can, who doesn't give up, who doesn't give up, didn't give up and like consistently rose against the odds to achieve glory. 
Um, so then if you're, if you're truly a champion, you know, if you're truly like made of what you talk or what you think or what you say to other people, then, hey amen. well, time to get up. So it's, uh, that's what, that's what happens with me. It's like, sometimes, you know, I'm like, I'm like, dude, you know what? I don't feel like playing this game anymore. Sometimes I'm like, dude, you know what? Like I'm, I'm about to make me it out. Sometimes I'm like thinking all these little <laughs> things and it's just, just how it is. But then, you know what? Sometimes I'm like, you know what? I ain't going to let this dude win. And then I just get up and I start practicing. So that's how it goes. Wow, man. That's that's a crazy message. I mean, like, masters of any craft have failed more times than you can imagine. And they just never gave up. And they're the product of their ambition and resilience and stuff. So I definitely feel that. That's, 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 that's some powerful stuff. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Hey, Seth, anything else? No. Uh, if, if we're all good, we can wrap it up here. Zero, if you want uh, copies of the extra questions, I'm sure... So I can bring them over. Maybe you can use them in you know, a YouTube video of your own. We wouldn't want them to go to waste. Yeah, no problem. Maybe I can make like a Twitter post or something. Oh, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, Cool. All right. So any any last shout outs to anybody you want to give before we close out? Any thanks or anything? Uh, well, shout outs to Team Solomon for always supporting me in my endeavors. I appreciate you guys very much. Shout outs to all the lovely sponsors we have. Obviously, Red Bull, always, always such a homie. And then we have Logitech, HTC, CyberPower. Geico and HyperX. Thank you so much, all, all of you guys, for supporting me, and uh, I will I will make you guys proud this season. Awesome, awesome, cool. good stuff. Yeah, well, so... thank you again for tuning in. You can yeah. always reach out to us on Twitter at the set count or at Gmail at the set count at gmail dot com. Uh, thank you once again. Please give us all your runback questions, and you can catch us on uh, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube. I think I think SageFix YouTube. Uh, and pretty much every platform you can think of. I personally use iTunes, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, once again, Zero, thanks for coming out. Uh, really pleasure having you here. Everybody else who's listening, hopefully you enjoyed the show. You can catch us on the set count on Twitter at the set count, and you can catch any of us on Twitter as well. Um, other than that, I think Sage always does such a better job when he's here of closing. Yeah, out. dude, we're like bumbling buffoons <laughs> without Sage. I swear to if God, you have zero, any more I'm questions, sorry. be sure to email us at thesetcount at gmail.com. Other than that, stay tuned. We'll be posting on Friday morning, which you would not, you would know that already. But yeah, damn, we're bad. All right, well, we'll see you next <laughs> week. All right, bye. Zero, zero, you have to understand this is normal for us. This is, oh my God. <laughs> dude, Swar, I just realized something. What? I didn't do the run back thing. That's fine. It could still be edited. No, 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 no. Remember Sage always said that it was going to be his goal to make sure that I don't do the stupid run back thing? Aww, it's Sage missed it. Oh, my God. You met Sage, gonna... right, Zero? Obviously, clearly. Well, totally. yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Are you talking about Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get along really well with Mike. Yeah, Mike, yeah, yeah. the goat. I love him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, do you know? Do you know Mike was like this this metal guy? He was like, yeah, oh, we, yeah know, we know, sure. we know. Yeah, <laughs> there's pictures. About him on the yeah. Show. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like Pretty super cool. into metal. I, I I call it I call it the 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 time where Mike was discovering himself. I wonder if he's gonna listen to this. Well, he's gonna edit it, so he's definitely gonna listen to it. So whatever, yeah. Sage, you got your wish. I, I I I stay with him, dude. This dude had. Some of the crazy stories. Dude, oh he's, yeah, he's, I he's love. The best. I'll die. I'll die for Sage. Sage is crazy. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, All right. thank you uh, once again. This has been Vasef, Panagobaswar, and we will catch you guys next week. <laughs>